Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. My name is Jada and I'm the founder of Unbound Creation. I filmed my first YouTube video four months ago and I didn't publish it. <laughs> that is until maybe around two weeks ago or something like that. So I wanted to update you guys on on where I'm at and what's been happening ever since I filmed my video. So after after filming the video, I felt really good and it actually gave me a lot of energy and made me excited again. And I used that energy and I dedicated and directed it towards the Karate Corner, which is my second business idea. And that felt really nice because I had I hadn't worked on the Karate Corner much for about a year, maybe a little more. And you can hear more about that story either by clicking either here or here if you haven't already watched my first video. But anyways, I felt a similar excitement as I had felt when I was creating the my website for Unbound Creation and I used it all to create an Etsy shop to sell the journals that I had made for the Karate Corner. I hadn't initially planned to do Etsy because at, when I first thought of like, the idea I was also planning to do a two year long bike tour across the country and back and I thought that would be a perfect, the perfect opportunity to talk to dojo owners directly and in person about the karate corner and my vision and the journals. And I thought that I could maybe talk them into, you know, having a few of my journals in their shop. And if they were to make any sales, then they would get a cut of the profit and I would have my product across the nation. So I thought it was a win-win for both sides. But of course, that all had to change when a, a truck hit me a month, just a month and a half into the bike trip and left me having to figure out a new way to funnel potential customers to the karate corner and put my product in front of them. So when I, when I sat down to think about it, I didn't have to think long because I had already sold one of the journals to one of my close friends and one of, and his immediate reaction was, uh, you should totally sell this on Etsy. I think it would do great on there because it has a really unique look. By the way, this is what the journal looks like. <laughs> if you're interested, hit me up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they're they're really unique as far as journal go, journals go. It's not brown or anything like that, and it's handmade. So you know the perfect product product for Etsy. So with that in mind, I was like, totally excited, and I thought it was a great idea. And so I created or I updated my profile on Etsy, and finally. I think two years after having the idea, the idea and making the first batch of journals, I published my shop page and, and I waited and nothing. And then weeks started passing and still nothing. And so this, this sense of anxiety, I guess, started building inside of me and I was like, what did I do wrong? Like, what could I have done differently? And so, you know, as I usually do when I don't know what to do, I went to Google and I asked for advice. <laughs> and to do well on Etsy, you have to care about SEO and you definitely have to have more than one product. It doesn't matter how beautiful it is one product just doesn't look legitimate enough or and people won't take you seriously so after learning that i was my spirits were deflated pretty much i was crushed 
because I had spent so much time and energy figuring out how to make these journals and then actually making them. And I just couldn't imagine doing that for not even just one more product, but several more products. Um, and then SEO, I, but <laughs> I didn't even want to think about it because I had, I had been aware of the term before because of my experience making the, my two websites. But I had purposely avoided it up until then because it just hadn't clicked for me. It, it, yeah, it didn't make sense and it didn't feel natural to me. And I had thought that Etsy would have been a non-SEO way to get my product out there in front of a bunch of people who might want to buy it because Etsy, as my friend had pointed out, was already a curated market of people who really appreciate handmade things and i honestly expected people to just be able to type in journal and have my my pictures of my journal and the product page pop up right in front of them in front of them but that obviously wasn't the case so yeah basically reality hit <laughs> and and actually I got to work and actually making more products didn't end up being bad at all. It, I actually find it, found it kind of fun and enjoyable because I actually genuinely, genuinely do like journaling myself. And so making the content uh, that would go into the insert, journal inserts that I would then be selling was really nice because it was content that was full of affirmations and tips of how to maintain healthy habits and healthy lifestyle, which, you know, just, just even just writing that, those things out, reiterated them back at me and reaffirmed them within me and lifted my, my spirits. And I even found myself in the flow state a few times and it was really nice. But then I got to SEO <laughs> and that was a whole other story. I just, I couldn't figure it out. Like I said before, it didn't feel natural and felt salesy and fake. And I just, I didn't like it. And so quickly, unfortunately, all the energy I had from filming my first video kind of just went away, it dissipated and i i was crushed <laughs> essentially i was at a standstill and so quickly the karate corner and everything to do with it started to feel contrived just the way things with unbound creation had started to feel and so once again i found myself blocked only this time it manifested differently because I couldn't justify taking another two month break or who, who knows how long it would have been, only four months after having taken one. So I basically put my head down and went to work. But the thing is my, my lack of successes <laughs> and I'll call them for what they were, failures, or at least that's how I had been seeing them is failures they triggered just like a barrage of negative self-talk that I didn't notice at first. And it was, it was stuff like, if I can't do this, if I can't figure out SEO, then I'll never be successful as an entrepreneur. And no one will ever want to buy my journals and I won't ever make enough money to live the life that I want and all this kind of stuff. And it even extended outside of my view of myself as a business owner and entrepreneur and affected my my personal self-worth and uh, i started to think that i was a failure that i would never be good enough that i just wasn't smart enough to figure out seo and there must be something wrong with me essentially and though i didn't really realize it at the time i was stuck in a cycle, and a vicious cycle of fear. 
and it did not feel good. But slowly, I started at least to notice my negative self-talk and write it down whenever I noticed it in the moment. But the thing is, that was still really superficial work and I don't think I was ready to integrate what the fear was trying to tell me. So, even though I started noticing the negative self-talk, not much changed. Until I did a live guided meditation two weeks ago and the person guiding it felt called to say that the only thing to fear is fear itself and as as simple as that sounds as trite as that sounds it it broke me down <laughs> i i just i started crying and because it cut through the mental chatter and it got right to the heart of the matter and I could no longer hide from the truth, which is that I had been letting fear rule my life. From the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep and probably while I was sleeping too, it, it had affected my thoughts and therefore it affected my actions. It, it affected how I thought of myself and how I viewed the world and how I viewed my businesses and it just took full control and it wouldn't let me go. Until this person said what she said and I saw it for what it was and was in that moment reminded of the practice and honestly the wisdom of surrender. And, and I let myself recognize it, recognize the fear. And I committed myself as of that day, like I said, two weeks ago, to sit with my fear and to actually let myself feel it every day. Not only during my morning practice of yoga and meditation, but whenever it would come up and I would notice it, I would allow it to come up a lot and try to see, try to identify what had triggered it and what it was, what the deeper meaning within it was. And in that way, I showed fear that I wasn't afraid of it anymore, which is really the only thing that gives fear any power to begin with. So I've been doing that work and it's been amazing, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's been, it's all sunshine and rainbows now because it definitely isn't. <laughs> and I, and if I learned anything from, from my work so far in my spiritual journey, and especially the beginning of it, where I was dealing with a lot of grief and processing it and learning to let it go, it, is that this sort of work with heavy emotions like like grief, fear, anger, jealousy, anything like that, insecurities, which is really just fear. This sort of work takes time and going into it thinking that it won't only hinders the process. So I'm in it for the long, long run. And I know that it might take months and maybe even years, <laughs> uh, but I'm totally here for it because I know that it's what I have to do to grow as a person. And if I'm serious about being the best business owner that I can be, being the best person that I can be, and you know, that extends to everything else, all my relationships with other people and with myself. If I'm serious about all of that, then I can't be afraid of fear. I can't let it rule me and I can't back down. I have to do this work and I will do this work. And every time I do, <laughs> you know, people are scared of crying, but to me, I think it's the best thing, especially right, right after maybe even for a few hours after really crying and letting yourself feel whatever emotion you're feeling. I, I, at least for me, I usually tend to cry. But anyways, it's the best thing. It just, 
you feel so liberated after you feel like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders and the thing with this work is that even though it might take a long time once you integrate something and once you fully allow yourself to feel something it probably won't ever resurface again because you've broken that cycle and you've broken that pattern and you've integrated it and so the universe no longer sees a purpose to bring that up again and that's what triggers are it's just the universe trying to create space essentially for you to deal with, with these things head on and grow as a person and meet your fullest potential and so that's <laughs> that's been my past four months and the thing is the reason I hadn't posted my first video even though I had filmed it was because fear was telling me that it was never good enough and so not only the video but literally everything I did the, the other products I created for my shop the journals itself yeah everything I did it just was never good enough and I kept finding little mistakes and reasons and faults and everything that I did, and which was basically just reasons and excuses for me to not publish and put things out into the world. It was basically fear keeping me small and thinking that it would keep me safe. But now that I'm committed to this, new way of thinking and facing my fears not only did i publish the, that video i also published two videos of me and my animation process last week i'm publishing this week this video now <laughs> and and i commit to publishing at least one video every week from now on because I'm tired of letting fear rule me and I've been down that road too many times and it basically is just you trying you trying to control things and maintain control even though you never had control to begin with and so you're always left with this feeling of inadequacy and anxiety and it just doesn't feel good. So I so I, I want to try this new path, which is the path of surrender. And if you're interested in learning more about that, then please come back next week because I'll be talking more about surrender and what it means to me and ways that I think you guys, that might help you guys implement it in your life. So yeah, stay tuned, I think. But, anyone would benefit from a little more surrender in their lives. But as of for right now, for the present, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like the video and subscribe. It means a lot to me as a brand new channel and I'll see you next time.